Okay, hello, hello. You got levels? Are you looking good? Is he switched on here? Really good, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, I'll turn that down a little bit and then we'll do some blue taping here. So what we got going here is a, a Durst uh, 184 Laboratator. It's um, a fabulous uh, condenser enlarger from Italy. Um, known and revered, respected and feared um, for its uh, condenser light source. Here's the source of the magic. Huge pieces of glass that uh, train the light um, into uh, an exact spot in the middle of the lens. Um, and it has a really crazy quality of light, really, um, really hard, super contrasty. So here I am uh, printing a mural, which usually you lose contrast in, and I'm all the way down to a, a filter zero, a low contrast filter. So it's a crazy machine, and I really enjoy it. Okay. Filter zero and a little laboratator. The laboratator has such a hot lamp that it requires a cooling fan even to turn on for a moment. Okay, we're gonna go dark here and here. The show is based on two bodies of work, um, the Sausalito houseboats and then uh, these New Orleans landscapes from um, right after the storm, well, um, December. Um, I was actually living in northern Louisiana when the storm hit, but I was in San Francisco at the time. And um, I got down there in December and the place was still just an amazing wreck. Like, there was still no electricity downtown. Like, can you imagine like looking at the huge skyline of a city and being completely dark? It's just freaky. And um, so I, I was shooting landscapes, um, mainly the Lower Ninth War, but I also went um, east, uh, St. Bernard Parish. And then I just kind of followed um, Highway 90 east. So uh, right now I'm um, printing these 35 millimeter shots of the hippie houseboats in Sausalito. I mean, hippie houseboats or squatter boats, I'm not, you know, it's not necessarily hippies in them. And um, not all of them are necessarily squatter boats because some of them um, are on legal moorings. But the whole thing about the, the boat culture in Sausalito is it's all been kind of quasi-legal. One thing that's kind of interesting about it is people just kind of pushing the limits of, of, uh, of freedom in America. That's really the way I look at it. It's a project called Sunset Scavenger that's... Um, oh, here we go. That's... <laughs> um, that's kind of a wide-ranging project that's about, you know, the end of the world, kind of the big collapse and um, survivalism and global warming and peak oil and all that stuff. So um, kind of living on boats is just kind of a, a poetic aspect of it. But it's also kind of a documentary too. Well, we've got a little bit of sky here, but not enough. And we got white here where we want it, and we got black here where we want it. Um, we're going to need more sky. We're going to need probably a half stop in the sky. Cold water and then probably a one stop with the five. So Matt, should we do more test strips or we should just roll up a piece of paper and hit it? Let's kill it. You know that darkness might be cool. It's really gonna make the like the roof line of the uh, boat pop, which is kind of like the idea. It's like the the thing about these houseboats that really intrigues me is like the way they're just this hybrid of of you know kind of domestic architecture and naval architecture. They're like boats on the bottom and houses on the top, and um, just the way people kind of uh, improvise their carpentry and design. It's so pure and so hilarious. Okay, well we can turn the light on and actually um, see it roll a couple of times. 
So yeah, this this will give you. A, um, you can see what the hell's going on in the dark for the last seven minutes. You get these troughs with a couple of gallons of chemistry in there. And the trick is, you've got to get the paper rolling without dinging it up and getting a straight roll, kind of coaxing it out. So look, oh my God, there's a picture. So this is kind of the ultrasound, you know, where you get a little glimpse of your baby first before you get to see the whole thing, and it just kind of goes by like. And our sky is kind of medium. Ooh, look at our boat. Oh, yeah, see, that's great. Wanted to hold paper white on the roof. Hull's good. The hull's getting kind of dark. Like every once in a while, there'll be a little scratch or something that bothers me, but generally, I, I love all the dust. They all are, um, they're players in the picture right here this has got uh, the silver in it the heavy metal most of the chemistry in black and white photography is pretty benign but uh, the silver and the spent fix is the bad stuff so actually we recover it all here at Reiko and um, and Michael who works here has got a device that actually pulls the silver out of the spent, the spent fix and he recovers it and melts it down Here's a shot. Great unveiling. Here's where the first big surprise happens. Oh boy, it's a little dark in the middle. Huh? Great, so look, we got perfect white here. That's what we're looking for, and the good blacks in the windows. So really, if we just start a burn at the numbers and feather it really all the way to the edge. Okay, so. And more water, or less water, shit. Well, Matt, none of this would be happening, this show or these pictures, if it wasn't for Reiko, the Reiko Photo Center, which uh, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Stuart Kogod, the guy who owns it and kind of dreamed it up. And uh, it's a pretty amazing place to work. So what, what Reiko is basically is um, it's a darkroom rental facility where people can come and rent darkrooms and um, do their own photography. And uh, of course, there's a vintage photo booth from 1947, <laughs> like a real black and white one. And um, there's a gallery over here. This is Gimo Perini, like he's shot like in North Beach in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Here's my favorite shot. I got fucking cool bikes. Cruisers with Stingray seats. So Reiko is kind of like a, um, a, I don't know, a place where like old formats uh, go to be preserved. You know, like uh, we've got plenty of like uh, old enlargers that um, will probably never get used again. But if they would, it would happen here. So those are standing by in case there's a big run on 5 by 7 photography. Stuart made this, the guy who owns the place. It's uh, all one continuous roll of paper. Remarkable because it's 25 feet long, but more than that, there's actually more of it rolled up on the spool on the top. So it's usually, you know, two enlargers, you know, a condenser enlarger or a diffusion enlarger. I know a lot of people out there, like, you know, might want to use one or the other. But yeah, none, seriously, without this place, I would not be making these prints right now. So it's really cool that it exists.